Right, so, um, the things that we're going to talk about is some, some stuff on data types. So I want to build on what I talked about last time. Uh, and I understand some of you will have studied stats probably um, to quite an advanced level, and then other people will never have ever touched this material before. So we have quite a range of backgrounds coming in coming into this course. So my this is really to give everyone the same basic grounding that allows you to go forward and do um, useful project work and interpret papers and what have you. Um, yeah, so some more on visualisation, a little bit on descriptive statistics and the normal distribution which naturally leads into p values. And so last week I, I introduced this idea of the research question. So in general we want to find out the basic characteristics of the inhabitants of Catalonia. And to do that, we're going to take a sample because we can't, well, we don't, we don't know what the population is actually. But we don't know um, if we can measure everyone or not. But what we do know is there's some people there because they approached our spacecraft when we landed. Okay, so. We've already had a couple of um, suggestions of the things that we might, um, might ask. So I've, I've put up a, a few base, a basics that I think, you know, if we want to characterise this population, these are weights, very important. We always want to know whether they're overweight or not compared to people on Earth. Um, height, age, gender, and perhaps alien species or species. We, we don't know. So we can come up with this, okay, we want to know something about our population, but perhaps we need to know how many of that population we need to sample um, to be certain our results are representative. So uh, we, we've landed and we've been approached by some, some inhabitants um, suffering from cowardice we quickly draw up a questionnaire, as you would in such a situation. We run out of our spacecraft, hand it to the first 10 people um, to approach, get them to fill it in, and then we take the results back onto our spacecraft. And we ask ourselves, well, is that, is that representative? Um, is it representative? Any thoughts on my method? Okay, so okay, so we may have landed in a particular community. Okay, can we? What, what else about the people who've approached? What might might bias our results? Um, who who might you send <coughs> if, if if aliens landed? Um, who might we send out to investigate? Okay, the police researchers. You might send some scientists. But those first 10 people arriving at our spacecraft, regardless of the community we've landed in, really, who knows whether they are representative? And is 10 people a good sample number? Yeah, so if you actually, if you remember our research question, it's broadly speaking, we want to characterise the whole population. So now we want a sample that represents that whole population so we can, when we know something about our sample, we also know something about, we want to say with some degree of certainty that we know something about the population at large. Okay, so we're going to do, uh, some, we did some data collection and got these uh, results. Unfortunately, like I say, I mean, you could keep trying with SPSS. It's possible IT are working on it at the moment. I suspect not. Um, and it's possible it could work. So I would encourage you to go to the QM Plus page press on the link and try opening the files. They may open. If not, I'll show you where they are and then you can at least navigate to them later on. Um, or at least I'll try and show you where they are. Yeah, okay, so QM Plus page. Let's see. Site for the course. 
and then if you scroll down there's a statistics um, statistics data So if you expand that, you'll see that's stuff from lecture one, the, the cycling, um, cycling uh, information, which I, I'll probably continue with some of those other themes. I'll, I'll introduce outside of lectures. I'll introduce other kinds of data, um, partly because I can't post publicly um, ripped off Star Wars stuff. <coughs> so I don't own the copyright. Okay, but here you go under. Lecture 2, um, and there's sample of a population, n equals 10 uh, there. So that's 10 people sampled from a pretend population that I made up. Um, and you will be able to, at some point, open that in SPSS. But do try now. You may, you may, may have some luck. Um, OK. So uh, I'll, I'll open it up, if it works for me. Should do. Oh, actually, I know that it works for me. Because here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, um, I'm just going to reiterate some of the things that we talked about. I talked about in the screencasts and talked about last week. Um, time. Yep. Uh, so. This is the SPSS. Uh, window that one day you will have access to, I hope, and I've defined um, a set of variables, so in the variable view you've got a set of um, variables with different IDs, so you've got height, weight, age, gender, so those are the things that I put in my survey to ask um, the inhabitants of this planet. I've in the last session we had scale or interval data already, um, but what we didn't have, um, and, and we also had um, ordinal data, which was the the ride number. Remember, so if I was doing a cycle ride at different weeks, they were ordered because they were maybe I did one ride and then I did another ride the next day, and then maybe a ride couple of weeks later. So there was an order, but the interval between them wasn't the same. And so that's ordinal data. Um, here you'll see that we introduced a couple of other ones, uh, well, one, one other t data type, the nominal data set. So this is a, another categorical variable. It, it, oh, hang on. Interesting. I thought I disabled that. Um, So last time we had a categorical, uh, well, th the ride number was a kind of category. Here, gender is also a category, but the order makes, it, it no, makes no sense to order gender, or indeed ID. So I've got here a unique, um, a unique identification number at the top. And that's just so that I don't muddle up all of my uh, survey questionnaires. But actually, the ordering of those IDs isn't important. I could have randomly assigned them. Um, they so happen to be sequential. But they're, all, they're nominal as well, because they're just labels. It could be ABC. Uh, it could be anything you like. But a numeric ID is quite helpful sometimes. Um, and then we've got height and weight, which are and age, which are scale data. They come on a continuous scale of defined interval. Well, okay, you have interval and scale and continuous, but uh, SPSS just calls this scale data. And then in the data view, you'll see that I've got the responses to the ten uh, questionnaires. So you have the Height, weight, age, and gender of each of the individuals. So the ID here is the each individual question. Um, 
I'll show you this now, but I will put it up on a, 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 a later screencast. The, with the gender, you see I've done what we call coded the gender. So it doesn't say male, female, it says zero, one. And so where I've said zero corresponds to male, one corresponds to female. What you can do, I'll show you just so you're aware that you can do this, is you can, under the variable view, you can click on the values tab. Let's that again, so you see. You see there's this little box there. Click on there, and you can say uh, the value, for a value of w uh, zero, I can give it the label um, male. Okay? And I can add that in. And then I can also do for a, la a value of um, one, I can give it the label female. So you can put human readable labels in, which is quite useful, it's quite a good thing to do. Because um, otherwise you come back to it and you can't remember what your coding means. Um, and that's just, called, that's, that's just called coding the data. So if I press OK, I'll go back to the data view, and then sometimes, so it hasn't shown up there, so then you have to, uh, something like edit options again uh, this will go online so you, you get to see but I just want to show you what some of the capabilities are um, oh there you go I thought it should say la variables shown as labels don't see if I've done it okay well anyway you can do the coding and you can get it to show you the right um, label in this column yep Also. You just click A. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, click A. Uh. A. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, I see. I was doing... You see that? There's a button there that does, it, does everything. It's just useful to know that you can do that. Um, I'm afraid it is very dry watching someone else use a piece of software. So, um, so there's our data sitting in SPSS. I, d I did want to make a note on precision. This is something that is, tends to happen. The difference between precision and accuracy. Accuracy is how close you are to, a, to the known value or to the true value of something so that's accuracy accuracy is how close you are to the true value so if you measure so if I've got a ruler and I know it says on it that it's one meter long and then I compare it to a standard meter a meter is a defined quantity so I compare it to that and it actually turns out that it's much shorter so it's Nine, really 90 <laughs> centimetres long, then actually it's accurate to within that, nine, that 10 centimetres. So it's not... But I could use my metre ruler that's actually 90 centimetres to measure things perhaps with a precision of less than one millimetre. So I might keep measuring something and always get the same result. And so that's my precision. We're using my ruler that's only 90 centimetres long. I measure things and I say, yep, I get it's a meet, everything I measure is a metre long, um, plus or minus one millimetre. Great. But compared to the true standard, those measurements are all actually 90 centimetres. That's the difference between precision and accuracy. But in our data, so the precision is essentially the number of decimal points that you can meaningfully use. So avoid precision well precision is the num it's essentially the number of decimal points that you can use um, it defines precision defines the spread of your data or spread of measurement